Hello crafters, today's video is Cricut Easter DIYs to be making to decorate your home. We have a couple different options for craft ideas today, so maybe you like making things like signs or we're going to be working with heat transfer vinyl as well. As always, these crafts are on a budget because your girl likes to save a penny. So before we start, let us know in the comments down below what is your favorite budget-friendly hack or budget-friendly craft. I would love to know. Alrighty, it's time to get into the Easter ideas. Let's go. The first project we're working on today are these personalized bunny ears with some heat transfer vinyl. I picked up these ears from my local dollar store, so let's get started. Hopping over to Cricut Design Space, and I'm just pressing on the text bar on the left-hand side, typing out your child's name or whatever name or word you want to add. And I'm just going to go and change the font. So I'll play around with the font a little bit here. I normally press a good amount of them before I decide. And then I like to press this little unlock button on the bottom left of the text font, and that way I can drag it down, stretch it a bit, and make it longer. I just like that look, but whatever you prefer. Now I'm just going to go in, match the measurements to the bunny ears, and go to make it. So make sure you mirror image with heat transfer vinyl, and go ahead, do your settings. My Cricut machine is prompting me to load the map, so I'm gonna press that little arrow and then press the flashing C to cut it out. Now, when I am pulling out my heat transfer vinyl, I realized I did not put the shiny side down, which meant it cut on the wrong side. Really frustrating. So all I actually had to do was just flip the vinyl over to put shiny side down. I reloaded it and was able to cut it out. Thankfully, it didn't cut all the way through, so I did not waste the vinyl. But if this does happen to you, you can try to just cut it out again, flipping it the opposite way, if that makes sense. Or you might have to go in and just do a whole other piece of vinyl. So kind of frustrating when it happens, but hey, it happens even to experienced crafters like myself four years later. I did use the settings off of the Cricut heat guide there. You just type in your heat press and the material, and then it tells you what settings to do. And I did make sure to add some type of sheet in between my decal and my heat press. So I'm using a Teflon sheet, but if you have parchment paper or a thin pillowcase, something like that just to protect your design and your little ears from melting or being damaged. If you don't have a heat press, that's okay. You can use an iron or a hair straightener. I used a hair straightener for years and I sold those products, so definitely works great. Alrighty, so that's it. And when it comes to heat transfer vinyl, you know it's adhered properly when you put your finger over it and you don't really feel it being all bumpy. It kind of feels like it's one with whatever material, the shirt or fabric you're adding it to. So that's how you know it's done. It turned out really cute and my daughter loved it. So now we're gonna hop on over to DIY number two for Easter. Check out this cute little vinyl stencil painted sign. So with this sign, I wasn't too sure where I was going with and if you have noticed from my videos, the trend is when I don't know what the heck is going on, it always turns out to be my favorite projects. So I took these little painted boards I guess that I made. I picked up the little wood pieces from my local dollar store. I think it was a pack of five for two dollars or something. I'm just taking some acrylic paint. I mixed the green and the white to make more of like a light pastel green and now I'm just going in and quickly painting it over with my little sponge brush. Once it is dry I originally wanted to do kind of like a split monogram looking design and I also am using the Dollar Tree Crafters Square Vinyl. I am not a fan of this but I'm trying it again for you because I really want to like it. I mean it's so cheap but uh, cheap comes uh, quality, right? So it really depends. Some people swear by it but I am not a fan. I also thought, hey, I'll go in with this really cute pink. Well, let me tell you, I'll show you in a minute, I did not like how it turned out and I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. So my original plan was to actually just add my vinyl to the painted little board and I thought it would look super cute with the little split monogram that I made. Well, it did not. So I actually decided something a little bit different, which I'll show you shortly. I have shown how to make this split monogram design in a couple videos. I'll link it right here of how I did it with the shamrock. It's the exact same process, just with a different photo instead of the shamrock. I'm using an Easter bunny. So I'm just weeding out my vinyl here and I definitely need to change my blade. It is so hard to weed. If you don't know, the Cricut blades are actually pretty cheap. I think it's like $15 at most, and normally you can get a two pack for that on Amazon. So four years later and I'm finally switching out my blade. Yeah, it's been a while. 
so it kind of depends how often you use it and you don't always have to like switch it out it really depends but I use my Cricut quite often for things like cardstock and I'm surprised I haven't changed it by now so hopefully now that I've changed it I have yet to craft with the new blade but I'm sure it'll be a lot easier to weed after that if you are having troubles weeding a lot of times it's your material you're using if you're using vinyl that's um certain brands are a little bit more cheap it can be harder it really kind of depends. There are a lot of things that can make a difference. I'm actually going to put out a video very soon about weeding tips and tricks. I already filmed it, but this one made it to the upload list first. So once that's up, I will link it right here. Perfect. So now I'm adding my little transfer tape, pulling it up, and I'm going to add it to my little sign that I made. Okay, so this is what I mean. I just feel like it's not the look I'm going for. Not necessarily that cute. Maybe if it were decoration for my kids' room, like that would be kind of cute, but I don't know why the pink and the green for some reason, maybe because it was more of like a neon pink, it just didn't go well. In my opinion, I just was not a fan of it and it was really bugging me. At first I was just gonna leave it for the tutorial, but I want to actually use these crafts because I am paying money for the vinyl and stuff like that. So I decided, I'm going to get more acrylic paint and make it more of a gray. It's kind of, I don't know, lame maybe. Most of my home decor is just gray. Maybe it's boring, I don't know, but I like it. So we're going in with some black and white, obviously to make some gray. I wanted kind of a light gray look. I think it got a little darker than I wanted, but it still turned out pretty cute. So I'm taking my sponge brush and going over the whole entire little plaque here. I ended up leaving this overnight to fully dry because I did not want to have any bleeding going through with my paint under my vinyl if I started pulling it up while it was still a little bit wet. So I let it dry for the entire night. Yes, I'm wearing the same outfit the next day. Do not judge me. Alrighty. So this is what I mean by the projects that I do not plan usually come out pretty great. I feel like when I have a mistake, which as you might know, I love to keep it real in my videos. I love to show my mistakes as embarrassing as they are and as much as in the editing process, I want to delete that part from the video. Trust me, I was tempted in this one a couple times. I also want to show it because all of us crafters will make mistakes at one point or another, even if we are very experienced, even if we have a whole Etsy shop and we're selling stuff. Accidents happen and I like to show how to fix it. So I really like how it turned out. I went ahead and just took my weeding tool and popped out all of those little letters, weeded it out, and it turned out super cute. The last one we're doing today is this heat transfer vinyl. Easter bunny treat mat. You could do this onto a plate with some permanent vinyl or maybe a tray, but we're doing heat transfer vinyl today because I like to diversify my tutorials a little bit. So this is one that I actually purchased off of Etsy. If I can find the exact shop, I will link it right down below because I did purchase it, I think a year or two ago. I'm just going in with the little text bar and adding a couple of names. Now with this one, I like to leave some space because if other kids get added to the family, then you can add extra names. I don't know, is that weird? That's just me. Especially when their family is still growing. I don't want anyone to feel left out. So I'm going ahead and just sizing it. Now my little treat mat place mat that I purchased is way bigger than 12 by 12. And that would be great if I had a 12 by 24 Cricut mat, but I don't. I have a 12 by 12 Cricut mat. So how I'm going to do this is the little white rectangle at the back I'm using almost as like a little template for the size of my little place mat. So, that way I know where I need to slice out parts. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a little shape, like a square or a rectangle, putting it over top of my image and slicing it. You could do the contour button. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. I do feel like that would be a lot harder because there are little pieces to this. So to me, it's just easier to do the slicing method. And the point of this is now that I have sliced it, it has separated them. So now I can cut it out on two separate cuts. So it's going to be one cut first on the 12 by 12 mat, still the same color vinyl, but it's going to be two separate cut and then when I go to actually adhere it to my placemat I'm going to piece it together and line it up so it looks like one full seamless 
decal, if that makes sense. You'll see what I mean in a little bit here, but that's the way I do it and get around it when I don't have a large mat. And I would suggest you try something like that as well if you want to make a larger project than the mat. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. I do feel like with heat transfer vinyl, it's a lot easier to do the kind of split mat method like this because it doesn't need to line up perfectly since I'm using my heat press and I'm weeding out all in between. So you're not gonna tell that it's on separate kind of little mats. You'll see what I mean when I go into the heat press process. Now this one was very annoying to weed. Like I mentioned, my blade is so dull. I didn't realize, I didn't really think about it. And it's also new vinyl I was trying out from Amazon. Would not recommend, so I won't even bother telling you what one it is. I'm just, I'm not a fan of it at all. It was just hard to work with. I like to try out new ones to, you know, suggest to you and also see what works best for myself. But nope, this one was a no-go, that's for sure. So I'm setting up my heat press again with the little heat press settings off of the Cricut website that they recommend. And now you can see what I mean by cutting it on different mats, how it actually will line up. So I try to match it the best that I can. You could totally do a little bit of a hack to get this perfectly lined up like your SVG that you bought, but I will show that in another video because I don't want to add too much chaos and overwhelmingness to this video. Now, I don't know if you notice right now, but I actually forgot to weed out part of those little bunny ears which I will notice in a second in this tutorial. And <clears throat> when I go to line this up, I'm just putting my little Teflon sheet over top of it. Again, a thin pillowcase will do, or parchment paper, butcher paper, and doing my heat press over one part at a time. So you can still make heat transfer or iron-on projects with your heat press or your iron or you know whatever you have if it's a lot bigger than your heat press. It will just take a couple of separate presses, if that makes sense. So now I realized, oh my gosh, I forgot to weed it. So I already pressed part of it down. I wasn't able to remove it. So I just went ahead and started weeding it this way. I'm going to cut the camera here and then I'll jump over once it's fully weeded. And this is what it looks like. So I saved the day with that one. Sometimes I do forget to weed stuff out and I press it down and oh my gosh, that can be frustrating. If it does happen where you accidentally press apart and it's not the way you wanted it or you forgot to weed, you can actually fix that. You don't have to just scrap the shirt altogether. So what you can do is heat up the back of you know your fabric or whatever you're working with and normally you can just pull it back up if it's not on there too good if that makes sense. Doesn't always work but it is a good trick to try so that you don't have to scrap the whole t-shirt. Otherwise there are little ways you can fix it by layering things on top which we'll talk about in another video but there are definitely ways to fix it so don't panic if that happens. I got you. Okay so now I'm just peeling it up to see how it's sticking. I'm doing the little method where I'm testing how it feels so if it's really adhered properly i shouldn't really feel the bumps of the vinyl it should just kind of feel like one with the fabric i'm working with you should almost see the fibers of the fabric coming through the vinyl if that makes sense and that's when you know it's on there really good it's kind of tricky but you want to find the perfect balance of not completely melting your vinyl or anything but also making sure it's on there properly so if you have to wash it or you know move it around it's not peeling up it does take a little bit of practice, but look at me when I realize, oh, it's not on there properly. You can just lay back down that carrier sheet and then add more heat and pressure. So don't worry if you take off that carrier sheet, you can just put it right back down, reuse it and heat it up again. So this is what it turned out like. I do like how it turned out. I definitely made a little bit of a oopsie, but it kind of worked out because it just looks like a little spirally arrow and it's honestly just for my kids so they don't really care they're young and i don't really care either i just wanted to kind of make this for fun i forgot to mention but this placemat i did pick up on discount it's actually a fall placemat and it was at some random like grocery store so i have picked up placemats like this at my local dollar store definitely an option like i said you could do trays or plates but i wanted to show you a heat transfer version of this so it's pretty cute i like it and uh, yeah that's it for the video today that's a wrap on today's video but have no fear i have a lot more cricket crafting and diy content on my channel so feel free to check out one of these playlists or videos here otherwise i have a lot more content if you wanted to check out my channel i will
will also leave my Instagram right down here. Please take a moment to make sure you are subscribed because I post new crafting ideas and Cricut videos multiple times a week for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.